Okay, uh, we will welcome Michael to uh, the stream. Hello, Michael, how are you? Hello, very good, how are you? Very good, thank you. Thank you for the introduction and hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are watching this. And welcome to the Cloud Free Satellite Images for UMPs Operations talk. So a bit more about clouds then. But first, a little bit about us at GISPO. So I work at GISPO. Yeah. We, we should wait just one minute uh, before we start. So everyone that okay. joined uh, are in the same uh, schedule. Uh, so, just one minute, sorry. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, very interesting talk, the last one. Kind of yeah, there were uh, a lot of talks uh, in this uh, se session about cloud uh, detection, all of them very different and very interesting. So definitely a topic still needs a lot of uh, attention and development efforts. Yes. So it was very, very nice all of the different approaches. Okay, now uh, you can start, I leave you to it. All right, thank you. So, uh, yeah, uh, cloud-free satellite images for UMPs operations, welcome. And first, before going into it, I will tell you a little bit, just a little bit about GISPO. So we were founded in 2012 by Pekka Sarkola and currently we have 15 employees. And we are the biggest company, I believe, in Finland, focused exclusively on Phosphor-G, and we are a strong advocate for open source software. So some things we do, we do consulting for our customers with using Phosphor-G solutions, open data, we develop software, mostly QGIS and QGIS plugins. Um, we train our customers in using Phosphor-G tools. We provide customer support for software, including QGIS, PostGIS, GeoServer, in Finnish and in English. And just briefly about myself, I'm Mikael Valtola. I've been working at Gispo as a software developer now for over four years and also been studying at the same time at Aalto University. And I wrote my geoinformatics master's thesis about this project. So yeah, a lot of words have been written about this. Uh, so CFSI, uh, here's the entire project in a nutshell. So CFSI, short for Cloud Free Satellite Imagery, it's kind of the working name for this project. And when we started out, our main goal was to create a system that can generate cloudless satellite images automatically. And we could then publish these cloudless images as monthly or seasonal data products. And those could be then used as starting point for analysis. And this allows uh, everyone to skip the pre-processing and jump straight to the interesting part without having to do the cloud detection and removal first every time. So CFSI, a bit more about the technical details, uh, is written in Python. It's heavily utilizing Open Data Cube. So the entire implementation is based on that. And more on this later. And the code is, of course, open source. It's freely available. And uh, just search uh, Cloud Free Satellite Imagery on GitHub, you can find it easily. And there's also the uh, repository name on the slides. The main focus has been on Sentinel-2 data. Uh, as it's free to use, it has sufficient temporal resolution for our needs and a pretty okay spatial resolution at 10 meters. And this project is born from a pilot project with the UN. A bit more about that now. So some background uh, about the needs of the UN and how they influenced the development. So when we started the pilot project in September 2020, uh, we started in a close uh, cooperation with the UN OpenGIS initiative. And we have had weekly meetings where we discussed issues and solutions and we showed our results. And the entire uh, pilot project has focused on Abue, this is a disputed area that is on the border between Sudan and South Sudan. And on the map, you can see the red area there. And also the grids where it's located. So the UN has an uh, interim security force for Abue, which is uh, UNISFA. And it has been deployed in the area since 2011. And they use satellite data to monitor activity in the area. And one of the data sources they already use is the Sentinel-2 constellation by ESA. And, uh, it takes new and freely accessible images of the area every five days. So every five days you get new data from every. 
And one of the challenges with using Sentinel-2 data in the area is that it has a hot semi-arid climate and there is a yearly rainy season from May until October. So for those six months during this time, there is persistent cloud coverage. And Sentinel-2 has optical sensor, which you cannot, of course, see through the clouds. So generally, for six months every year, you have very low uh, ground visibility because of the clouds. So this is, uh, this is the main challenge. And you may ask now, how does CFSI work? How can you create those cloudless mosaics from images with clouds? And we'll get to that just in a bit. But before, just uh, quickly a couple of terms that I need to introduce. So mosaic is a gapless coverage created from multiple images, in this case, Sentinel-2 scenes. It can also be called a composite image. And another necessary definition here is clear pixel. And what do we mean by when we talk about clear pixels? Well, in this context, we say a clear pixel is every pixel that is not a cloud or a cloud shadow. So it's important to filter out not just the clouds, but also the shadows as they create these dark areas in images that are not useful for analysis. And you can see an example of this in the top right image there. There's a cloud and its shadow. Now, how CFSI works, uh, in general, it can be divided into three main steps. So first, we get the Sentinel-2 data. We get it from the Synergize S3 archive on AWS using Open Data Cube. And next, we detect all pixels in those images that have clouds or shadows. And in the final step, we construct cloudless mosaics using the most recent clear pixels available. And this is an important definition because in CFSI, we always focus on the most recent available data. And the reason for this is very simple. It's because UNISFA is mostly interested in getting situational information from the area in a timely manner. And they may, for example, not be very interested in what has happened six months ago. They want, want to know what has happened in the last couple of weeks, let's say. So how to automatically detect clouds? This is a big, big challenge, a big issue, of course. And there are multiple tools and methods designed for Sentinel-2 images, as we have already seen for in this Phos4G. But these are the options that we explored. And option number one here is Send to Core. And this is used to create the Sentinel-2 scene classification map, or SCM. And it's already provided for every scene, so you don't have to generate it yourself. But unfortunately, it's not the best accuracy. And another option is FMask. This was originally done for Landsat 8, but later for Sentinel 2 also. And it can detect clouds, cloud shadows, water, and snow. Then we have Maya, uh, which is a bit more complicated. It's a multi temporal classification tool uh, with uh, good accuracy. I believe it's the best accuracy of these tools uh, overall. But uh, it looks at multiple images of the same area from different dates. So it can better estimate if there's things like bright buildings, uh, snow, et cetera. But unfortunately, it's not currently supported in the CFSI because it's not very easy to use and automating it is a bit, bit more complicated. And finally, in the list, there's S2 Cloudless. And this has been created using a machine learning algorithm that has been trained on cloud masks that have been created by Maya. So in, in a way you could say it's been born from Maya, based on Maya. And it detects only clouds and not the cloud shadows. And for this, CFSI has its own way to detect the shadows that is based on the S2 cloudless cloud masks. And the way CFSI does this is quite simple. It's naive and the shadow masks are unfortunately not as accurate as those made by FMask or Centicor for that matter. But uh, what all of these methods have in common is they produce cloud and cloud shadow masks. And basically there are rasters where, for example, value zero means clear pixel, value one means cloud, value two means cloud shadow, and so on and so on. And you can see an example of uh, cloud masks uh, on the overlaid on a Sentinel-2 scene on the top right there. And CFSI uses these masks when creating mosaics. We only pick the clear pixels. And naturally, the accuracy of the cloud masks has a big impact on the mosaic quality. And if we fail to detect the cloud, for example, it will end up in the output mosaic. So we will see some clouds if the detection is not uh, perfect, which it unfortunately isn't. Uh, here are some examples of cloud and cloud shadow masks, some more examples. These are from Earthmask, 
The pink areas are clouds, the yellow areas are shadows. As you can see, the cloud detection accuracy is fairly good. Some hazy small clouds in the top center there, which are not detected. And these are the kind of semi-transparent clouds that are the most difficult to detect for any method because they are, they are very hazy and difficult to see automatically. Uh, you can also see the shadow masks, they are a bit conservative. Uh, they cover some areas which are not in shadow, but uh, this is a small problem because we want the most recent data. So if we discard pixels that are clear, then that will lead to more older data being used. Now, CFSI creates those cloudless mosaics. It uses data from Sentinel-2. And more specifically, it uses the level 2A product. And this means the mosaics are created from data that has already been pre-processed. And those values in the L2A product, they are bottom of atmosphere surface, so <coughs> surface reflectances. Yeah. And the L2A product is uh, what's called analysis ready data or ARD. And CFSI does not process these mosaics in any way. It does not apply any post-processing. It simply picks pixel values from the L2A product. And this means there can be visible seams in the mosaics. Uh, but if you remove these uh, seams by doing some kind of smoothing or something, then you can no longer use the mosaics for analysis. It kind of distorts the actual surface reflectance values. So what this means in practice is if you want to just create some nice satellite images without clouds for, for example, your background of your map, then there are probably better solutions than CFSI. And it's also good to manage uh, some expectations here and the mosaics which CFSI creates will still have some clouds or cloud shadows because unfortunately the detection methods are not 100% not accurate. So now I'll explain how CFSI creates cloudless mosaics. Uh, first, the user selects a spatial temporal range for the mosaic. And this defines the area of interest and the time range that is used when looking for Sentinel-2 data. So basically, you can choose to create a mosaic that only uses data from, let's say, the last uh, data published within the last week, for example. Or you can also create another mosaic that uses data from the last six months. The choice is yours. But of course, the bigger the spatial temporal range, the longer it takes to create the mosaic because you have to process more data. And next, after those two parameters have been given, CFSI creates an empty raster array for the given spatial extent, so the area of interest. And finally, uh, it starts filling the empty pixel values with uh, values from clear pixels in the Sentinel-2 level 2A product. And this last step is repeated for every Sentinel-2 scene that is within the given temporal range. And we always start with the latest published scene in the range, and then we move towards older data. So this way, we always end up with the most recent available clear data in the mosaic. The mosaic is complete after all the pixels have been filled or if we run out of uh, scenes to process. So there are no longer any, any scenes available within the temporal range. Here's a quick example of the mosaic creation pro process. These are taken from Jupyter Notebook during testing. And we have three images here. Images one and two on the left are Sentinel-2 data. And image two here is newer than image one. This is important because we want to prefer the pixel from image two because it's more recent data. But you can see there is uh, the corner, bottom right corner is missing. And you can imagine this missing area is a cloud. And basically CFSI works the same way. It uses those cloud masks to basically delete pixels that are clouds or cloud shadows. So it's Imagine it's a cloud there. And we have these two images. And on the right, you can see image number three. And this is the result mosaic that is created from those two scenes or images. And as you can see in image three, there are no more any missing pixels. The bottom right corner is filled with pixels from image one. And every other pixel in image three is taken from image two here because it's more recent. So we prioritize the more recent data. You can see a small seam in the lower right corner of image three. So this is because we don't apply any smoothing. In some cases, it can look a bit ugly. Uh, here it's pretty, uh, it's 
a bit hard to see even the scene. But in some cases, it's very clearly noticeable. But once again, it's because we want to use these mosaics for analysis. So taking the mosaic a bit further, here's the bigger mosaic that is created for the Abu area during the rainy season in August of 2020. And this mosaic is created simply by picking the latest available Sentinel-2 data. So basically, this is what you would get if you don't do any cloud masking. It's basically what you get if you create a mosaic simply by taking the latest, latest data available and you don't use CFSI software. So this is kind of the naive approach of taking, downloading the latest scenes and putting them together. So you can see, not, not very good. Uh, it's very, very cloudy. And you can also see like, this seam in the middle, this vertical seam, it's because of edge of a Sentinel-2 data take. So basically those left and right sides are imaged on different days. That's the reason for the scene here. So for a comparison, here's the same mosaic for Abe during the same rainy season, August of 2020. But this one is created using CFSI. And this one uses S2 cloudless cloud masks and the CFSI shadow masks. And it's using Sentinel-2 data from the last 90 days. So as you can see, obviously it looks a lot better than the last one. Uh, this one is mostly clear. There are still, still some small white areas. And uh, these are probably clouds that S2 Cloudless has failed to detect in this case. There's also even smaller kind of bright red areas. And these are pixels with missing data. And basically what it means is there is no clear pixel that is available for those areas within the given temporal range of 90 days. So in this case, it means that there has been really persistent cloud coverage during the rainy season that is kind of expected. But for those areas, we didn't find any clear pixel in the last 90 days. Uh, luckily, there's not that many of those areas and you can get rid of them completely if you just increase the temporal range. So if you set it to say 180 days, then it's most likely that you won't have any, any pixels in the mosaic with missing data. Now, CFSI also generates this recentness information uh, for mosaics it creates, and this is stored in a separate band of the output mosaic. And basically, recentness tells which day each pixel is taken from. So in this image, the darker colors represent more recent data, and the latest, latest data in this mosaic is from 31st of August in 2020. And this recentness information is very useful because if you see something interesting in the output mosaic, you make a spot something on the ground, you can easily tell which date the observation is from. And you can tell uh, if it's new or old information. So if you already knew that, or if it happened like six months ago, if it happened last week. And these values are stored in the raster as integers and they can be converted to dates. And uh, as the mosaics are created by picking the latest cloud-free pixel, you can also see some kind of cloud patterns in this uh, recentness information. And you can also see the effect of the data, data take scene in the middle, the vertical scene is also here. So you can see the left side, the Western side is more, more recent in this case. And here is again the comparison and the recentness band for the comparison mosaic. So as you can see, it's just two colors. So basically data from two days in late August, while obviously the CFSI mosaic it includes data from many more dates, so from that 90-day 90 90-day 90 temporal range. CFSI is uh, built on top of Open Data Cube, so I'll talk a bit about that. Open Data Cube or ODC it lets you easily construct spatial temporal data cubes to process remote sensing data, and it's a very useful tool. And the main components are a PostGIS backend database that stores information about your data sets. And then there's the main Python API, which lets you query the data and create the actual spatial temporal data cubes. And ODC is built mainly for indexing data and not storing it. And what this means in practice is you don't have to download tons of Sentinel-2 images to your computer. And you only have to transfer what you actually need, what you actually use. And ODC makes it very easy to build data cubes in Python. And the data cube is a great way to organize and handle multi-temporal remote sensing data. So it really made, made this CFSI project a lot easier. Here is the data flow of CFSI 
So Sentinel-2 scenes uh, are fetched from the Synergize AWS S3 storage to, and they are indexed to the ODC database. And it's a so-called requester paste bucket. So you need to authenticate and a small charge for downloading that data also exists, but it's, it's very small. Uh, ODC can stream the data directly from S3 using GDAO, or you can also fetch the data locally to ESA's.safe format. And this uses the Sentinel Hub Pi library. So CFSI has kind of configurable option for this. And this is optional and the files are stored in a cache directory that you can delete if you need, for example, more disk space, but it's, it's an option. And every output, including cloud masks and mosaics is also added to the ODC index and they can be later accessed using ODC. And this is beneficial because it lets you use the software called DataCube OWS to easily share your results. So DataCube OWS is a separate tool for hosting OGC web services such as WMS, WCS, and you can use data directly from the ODC index. So you can easily kind of host and share your uh, result mosaics, for example. Very quickly, here's the current uh, system architecture. It's very simple, uh, but it is designed to be parallelized by using Docker containers. So I kind of built it from the ground up. And uh, with the idea that someday it will probably go to the cloud and be distributed. And you could easily scale this up uh, by taking all the heavy data processing, such as the cloud mass creation to the cloud and using, for example, AWS Lambda. Uh, about hardware requirements, did some testing on EC2 with 64 CPU cores, 128 gigs of RAM. We have also this deployed on the UM private cloud with a machine with similar specs. Also did some testing on my own desktop with 48 gigs of RAM, six core processor. So it's possible that way also. Uh, creating the cloud masks is the most CPU intensive step. So CFSI is not multi-threaded because it, at this point it doesn't really need to be, but the cloud detection algorithms do use all available CPU cores very efficiently. So the more cores you have, the faster it goes. And if you distribute the processing, you can use machines that are not this powerful, obviously. And the repository has a sample Terraform config, which can use, be used to deploy this to AWS. And the main requirement is RAM, because uh, creating cloud masks for Sentinel-2 data at 10 meter resolution, the images are quite big, like 10,000 by 10,000 pixels, a bit more than that even. Uh, so it requires around 40 to 50 gigabytes of RAM. I think. And you also need some storage space, uh, creating one mosaic of the AB area. It takes around seven gigabytes of storage. Uh, finally, a summary and some future plans. So CFSI creates cloudless mosaics from Sentinel-2 data by picking most recent clear pixel data available. So that's the main, main thing here. And ODC is a great help. It simplifies data handling and it provides a good framework for working with remote sensing data. And really what it meant is that we don't have to reinvent the wheel here. We can use already the existing software and tools. And the main issue is creating cloudless mosaics uh, or in creating cloudless mosaics is the challenge of detecting clouds and cloud shadows. And it's a very important topic as we have seen with a lot of uh, talks on it already here. And maybe machine learning can bring some even more advanced solutions in the future, hopefully. And in the future, I would like to continue the development of CFSI to mature the code base by adding some unit tests and so on. Another interesting topic is distributing the processing to a cloud environment. So uh, doing the computation on uh, many instances at the same time. And the UN is also interested in exploring if high resolution imagery could be added to CFSI. So other data sets than Sentinel-2. So that's it. Thank you everyone for listening. Here's our uh, contact information. You can send me an email if you have any questions. Go check out the code on GitHub and yeah, feel free to ask any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. That was a very nice presentation, very clear. So thank you for that. Uh, we have some questions for you. Do you do any kind of Instagram matching for better visualization? Uh, no, no, we don't do any kind of uh, post-processing uh, to the mosaic. So we don't do any histogram matching, any 
any altering to the raw values that we get from the LTV product. And that is really only to preserve the kind of raw data that you get. That is something that could be done, but we have decided not to do. Okay, thank you. And um, what is the statistical method fill the empty pixels? Uh, statistical method for the empty pixels. Uh, not really sure what this question means, but uh, basically um, I can explain which pixels are left empty. So uh, the pixels that are left empty in the output mosaic, uh, they simply don't have any pixels within the given uh, Sentinel-2 L2A scenes that are uh, clear. So there's no clear pixel within the temporal range for those pixels that are empty in the end. Hopefully that explains it. And uh, another question is uh, how the posterior image analysis is affected when you have an image composed with several masked ones? I'm sorry, could you repeat that one? Yes. How the posterior image analysis is affected when you have an image composed with several masked images? Okay, so the way I understand it is how are the uh, analysis that you do after uh, or using the mosaics, how are they affected by using data from multiple dates? And uh, in theory, at least, it shouldn't have any effect because the L2A product is uh, ARD, analysis ready data, and it has already been corrected and rectified, so it should should be directly comparable to, if you have two scenes from different dates, then they should be directly comparable to each other. And they are the surface reflectance values that don't, or at least shouldn't change based on the data source. So they should be uh, directly comparable and it shouldn't have any effect. Okay, thank you for that. Um, has the method been used in the field already? Uh, not to my knowledge. Uh, this uh, has been in talks with UN, and we have uh, shown it also to their agricultural uh, units, which also are interested in this technology. And the kind of next goal is getting the UN its own open data cube and get this really going. It has already been deployed on the UN cloud, but we are working with them to increase their usage of this, and hopefully we can continue development of this together with the UN. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, I don't see any more questions. Um, there are some comments uh, in the chat, and very they are thankful to you and all the information you shared. Um, if there aren't any more questions from the audience, uh, we can uh, say goodbye to Michael and thank him again for all of the information he shared. And uh, I hope to see you in another session, Michael. Yes, definitely. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Okay. Bye -bye.